What up, Corkies? We're back, your premium beer tasters. We got six winter beers for you today that we're gonna be matching up and ranking for you. So these are carefully selected winter style mm -hmm. beers. And we got some unique ones in here. I'm looking forward to Got a good variety this time. All right, stay tuned. Hello everybody, welcome back to Cork and Java, your go-to place for coffee and wine, reviews and how-tos. We got a special video for you today, where it's actually a beer video. Yep. We're comparing six carefully selected winter style beers, and we're gonna be tasting them and telling you all about them and ranking them. So, what do we got first Let's up? Let's get started now. Well, Let's it's, go for it. It's tempting with winter beer to go stout and border all day every day, but we wanna try to mix that up. And so we are opening with Winter White Ale from Bells. All right, we've done some Bells in the past and they've been pretty good, so. It says this is intentionally brewed to have a cloudy character to it. And doesn't use any extra seasonings, but has kind of that classic wheat uh, profile to it. Yeah, just looking through the bottle, you can tell it's gonna be cloudy and probably unfiltered. Yep. Just looking at the color, it's pretty light. You can tell they use some pretty light uh, grain on there, not mm -hmm. heavily toasted there. What we got on the nose? I'm a little out of practice. Ooh. I got a little bit of lemon zest. A little yep. lemon zest. Cid what I like about this orange. is it's not super banana-y, which is good. Because I don't really like too much banana in my no. half of bisons. And I mostly like get that. citrus out of it. Yep. Ooh, it's very smooth. It's got a really nice mouth feel. Mm -hmm. It's not very heavily hopped, which I kind of enjoy for this kind of style. And, yeah. and, and it makes it a little bit more malty. Although I am starting to get, as it just sits, a little bit more hops coming in on the very back end. On the very back, but the yeah. mouth feel is super smooth, but with some good carbonation in there. Mm -hmm. And then I get some mineral taste to yeah. it. Yeah, there, there's a pleasant mineral note. Mm -hmm. And there's still some of that kind of classic clove, maybe a hint of banana, but not a ton. Yeah. And it's really say, good, well yeah. balanced. And... When you're tired of those stouts and porters this winter, this is a really good one to yeah, pick I'm up. Yeah, I'm thoroughly impressed. All right, let's rate this one. Mm. No, I'm pleased, I'm gonna give it, say 91. 88. All right, so that puts us at 89 and a half. Yeah, first place. All right, first. second in line. Again, trying to mix things up this winter. We have Ballast Point Brewing bringing us the Spruce Tip Sculpin IPA. They say this is their standard IPA, which I haven't had, but with uh, Spruce Tips added in. Yeah, it could be something a little bit like gin. I'm thinking, so we'll see. I'm thinking it, I'm thinking it could enhance the already kind of piney or sappy nature of IPAs. Yeah. Especially if they use some like Cascade hops and stuff like that. This this could be super Christmas tree. <laughs> All right. It's Straight. got a good head on it, and it's a little darker than the last one. Very golden color. Yep. Overall. Still gold. Yeah. Get a nice pine, a hop aroma to it, but it's not. A lot of citrus notes on this. I get like grapefruit. It's not super punchy. I and I love grapefruit in my IPA. Um, and that, that's a characteristic that comes straight from the hops. Yeah. So it's probably dry hopped. Ooh, that's really nice. There's almost a sweetness to it despite the hops. Yeah, I mean, they balance the, mm -hmm. the bitter hops a lot with a really nice multi flavor too. I'd say it gets a little more dry as it lingers. Yeah, definitely mm -hmm. the hop stays around longest. And on the initial taste, you get a lot of that Mm. Sweet caramel maltiness, a uh, little bit like toasted nuts in there. But uh, um, it takes me to like walking through the snow in some Pacific Northwest evergreens or something. <laughs> I feel I feel like I could drink this all this year is delicious. long, anytime, year round. But maybe it's just mental projection. The idea of it being a spruce additive definitely makes it feel wintry. Yeah, I agree. Like, what are you gonna give this one? That's good. And especially I'm still, IPAs are growing on me. 
I'm gonna give this one, let's say 88. He's gonna give it a 90. 89 it is. Second place. I know the ladies are not gonna rate that one as high as we are, <laughs> not being IPA fans. No. Nope. <laughs> All right, third in line. This this beer really caught my eye because it blends two things you don't think about. This is I'm gonna assume it's Bosser Hund, but it's the Haywire Husky Coffee Lager. Probably Bosser Hund from Bosser Hund Brewing Company in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Staying local. And uh, it says here it sources coffee from a local coffee shop. And fun fact, I went to high school with the owner of that coffee shop. Yep. But, uh, we're really tasting the terroir of our <laughs> yes, we local are. area. And now being a lager and coffee, I have, I'm not sure what to expect Whoa, out of light. it. Whoa, it's light. Well, with a lager. I expect a good coffee aroma, a cleaner one perhaps than what you get in your I definitely style. thought it was going to be darker than this, being a coffee lager, which I've never heard of before. Usually mm -hmm. it's coffee stouts or something dark, but says it has enough coffee beans in one pint for a full cup of coffee. Whoa. I almost get a jalapeno taste. <laughs> or, or smell. <laughs> I can see kind of a chili or pepper. Now the coffee smell, if you ever just straight open a can of coffee and smell it, that's what I get. Yeah. I get that. It's not like a super roasted coffee. Yeah, I get uh, a little bit of that, a little chocolatey kind of grassy notes. That's weird, there is that kind of like a vegetable or pepper. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's, Let's give it a it. taste. <coughs> Swallowed the wrong way. <laughs> Definitely got really nice coffee characteristics in there. And it's different than any coffee beer that I've ever mm -hmm. had, just being that lager. And it probably lends itself to absorbing more of that coffee flavor. Yeah. and. It lets the coffee stand out. It's not fighting against the super heavy malt and chocolate of style. Yeah. Oh man, I really enjoy this. Now, the it, coffee... it's, it's so deceiving though, because it looks yeah, you don't expect completely coffee. different than how it tastes. Now just one, I'd say slight negative, I'm picking up on it. Maybe it's just me, but the coffee taste is good. It's, it's pronounced, but it's a little like a stale coffee for me, like a pre-ground. Yeah, and it probably was like, <laughs> You know, usually they make a, you know, pint of coffee mm -hmm. or whatever and, you know, pour it straight into the mash, but... But I would still definitely drink it. Don't don't let that uh, one comment stick in your brain too much. Yeah, it's good. I don't know if I could drink this entire no, pint. No, I wouldn't drink the whole pint, but I'd happily have a smaller serve. But it's got a, n a nice ABV to it. It's 7.2 as well, so... I didn't even read that. Yeah, so, so it'll warm you up this winter and uh, it'll be nice. I could see this as like a, a almost like a breakfast beer too. Yeah, actually, I believe that's what they describe it as on their website. Nice. And uh, if you're interested in this kind of style, I also check out, recommend checking out, if you're ever in Asheville, North Carolina, Burial Brewing has a coffee saison. That is absolutely one of the best coffee beers I've ever had. Awesome. So let's rate this one. Hmm. I think it's really onto something good. Could use a little more refining maybe and just have its delivery, so I'm gonna give it an 83. It's gonna give it an 85, so... 84 80. it is. Where's the front? All right. Yeah, overall good. What's yeah. up next? Yeah. All right, we got Samuel Smith's Organic Chocolate Stout. Now, Samuel Smith is one of my favorite long-time breweries. I like their Imperial Stout a lot. Their Oatmeal Stout's yeah. killer. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I've always loved their beers. Their Oatmeal Stout actually goes good over ice cream. If you've ever tried I have that. never tried that. Their oatmeal, yeah. Oatmeal stout float. And a fun fact, brewed with the same well water since 1758. Mmm, well water. So, yeah, characteristics of the well water is going to give you a really mineral, minerally hard water, which is great for uh, brewing beer with. A lot of people, a lot of breweries, they'll um, filter out everything in the water and then add kind of the, the minerals that they want, but I guess they had right in the ground what they wanted for this, and it's been a tradition ever since. That is opaque. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not super dark. No, right around the edges, you'll get some light coming through. Yeah, it's not a black hole like we've seen in some others, but it's definitely, it's definitely dark. And only, I'm kind of surprised it's only 5% ABV. I get a maple syrup kind of smell. You get a syrupy sweetness, definitely some smooth chocolate smell coming off of that. It's really pleasant. Yeah, like a milk chocolate. Yep. Yeah. 
I want to say it's a dark chocolate. A little lighter in this room. Probably because of all that sweetness coming through. Yep. But yeah, let's okay. give it. Yeah, it's good. If you like chocolate, you'll like this. If you're not a huge chocolate fan, like myself, mm -hmm. it's a little too much. I, it's definitely kind of like a chocolate pudding, I would say. This is the liquid form of chocolate pudding to me. It's a clean chocolate flavor. It, it's it's a consistent chocolate flavor. It's not changing drastically as it lingers. Yep. It's, it's, it's a, like a pudding pop. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Um, nothing really jumps out as being particularly super unique or characteristic about it. No, I'd say this is a good one to share just because mm -hmm. it'll be a little bit too much after about half a glass of this to me. Oh yeah, it'd be heavy. Yeah, not only heavy, just like so much chocolate sweetness to it. But definitely enjoyable. Yeah, definitely good. All right, so, let's rate it. Rating. Yeah, it's good. There's nothing that crazy unique about it that really elevates it super high. I'm gonna give it a solid 89. I'm just gonna get 83. Ooh, maybe yeah. just personal preference. Yeah, it's just it's a little overboard with the chocolate to me. But hey, that's just personal preference. It's not too bad. So yep, man. So far, the order has been the way we've been tasting it. <laughs> I haven't had to switch anything around. Next we got... So that's an 86 average, by the way. We got Pecan Pie Porter 2018 from Clown Shoes. Yes. Or is that the name of the beer? I don't know. No, nope, anyway. that's the name of the brewery. <laughs> yep. It's an expensive one at $14. So this one better be good. <laughs> we have high expectations. Now what does it say about itself? Aged in bourbon barrels, Pecan Pie Porter. Yeah, I mean you That's gotta have about Genghis Khan in the back. You cannot have a winner, I don't think, of a winter beer without it being aged in a bourbon barrel. So and a potent ten point five percent. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that stick right there. Slightly darker than the last one, but not much. It's not a black hole. But it's dark. Yeah, I see a little less light coming around the edges. The head's lingering. Ooh, now, great smell. That is a fantastic yeah. smell. We didn't get this one quite as cold as the others, which a lot of stouts and porters are better. More warmed up. Definitely not as sweet smelling as the last one, but it is still sweet. I still get maple. Yeah, I get a little the, bit of that, but I, I do nuts. get the pe pecan coming Yeah, I was about to say, well, oh yeah, it says nut in the name. Like kind of like that, the pecan pie filling is kind of... Mm -hmm. What I'm I getting, agree with that. like a sweetened pecan. Let's try it out. All right. Oh man, you get the the oak characteristics of that bourbon barrel, and that lingers mm -hmm. on. Yeah, that that comes out more as it lingers. It's got some natural chocolate taste to it from the just the malt. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely sweet, and but that it's sweet that but bourbon not barrel, overly sweet like the last. Yeah, one. the bourbon barrel kind of levels that out nicely. Yes, and it really warms you up with that <laughs> high ABV as well. That is good. It's yeah. well balanced. Very good. But uh, I couldn't drink a whole lot of it, personally. I feel like I could finish that bottle. <laughs> um, it is heavy. It is heavy. But, it, but it's very well balanced. It is a perfect characteristic, I think, of a winter beer. Mm -hmm. To me, it has a little bit of sharpness up front that I'm not a huge fan of, but again, that the sweetness and the bourbon barrel really complement each other to balance everything out. Yep, take this on your sleigh ride. Well, you rate this one. That was good, but man, I'm, I'm sticking in the ballpark today. I'm gonna say 89. I was gonna say a 93. All right, so 91 it is. All right, new leader. All right, and now, last one. We have Milk and Cookies from Wicked Weed Brewing. Yeah, just based on the name, I have figured this one's gonna be a sweet bomb. Nice dessert beer, maybe. Mm -hmm. It says Imperial Milk Stout with golden raisins, cinnamon, and vanilla. With Imperial, I expect a pretty hefty ABV on it as well. No, oh, only 8.5. 8, 8, I was expecting at least a 10. And this is also out of Asheville, North Carolina. Awesome. Great place to visit if you're ever in that area. 
Darkest one yet. Almost a black hole. Um, Slight nice. light coming around the edges. Hmm. Wow. Very sweet. I was going to say, I didn't think I was getting much. Maybe it's just all sweet. It's not a getting a lot. I don't, I don't get much on the bouquet, but what I do get, it's almost candy-like. Like a sugar cookie. Yeah, it's very like a treat, a cookie, sugar. Yeah. All right, let's give it a shot. Cake batter. I was going to say potpourri. <laughs> I get cake batter... I definitely get the vanilla and the cinnamon. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say almost like maybe a fruit cake or some other kind of holiday bread that's pretty sweet, or a cinnamon yeah. bread. Yeah, a cinnamon bread mm -hmm. or cinnamon toast. Yeah, definitely it's buttery. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's got a lot of vanilla characteristics. The vanilla strong, and I think the the oatmeal stout characteristics really make it thick and smooth. And there's a little bit of hop in there too to kind of make it well, a little they, interesting. They need some, yeah. Yeah, it's not a ton, but um, I don't know. I think this is a, a good winter wine, especially. I bet this one would go you well with beer. some ice cream. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> winter beer. This is good. Yeah, that's a really good. I I you was like I was a little skeptical when you were naming all those. Uh, things that it's brewed with because a lot of times it can be kind of artificial tasting yeah. but this this doesn't taste very artificial it tastes um pretty natural i would say it, it's kind of bright enough in its character that it, it's more bright than the uh, color would indicate for yeah sure i think the vanilla really kind of elevates its own right? i feel like this could pair well with a lot of good christmas time desserts and mm -hmm. sweets so I think that, I mean, it creates a pie for me. So what are you gonna score this one? Due to its uniqueness and it manages to pull off a pretty complicated list of ingredients. I'll give it a good 93. I was gonna give it a 90. So. All right, 91 and a half. 91 and a half. All, All right. right, so let's start in first place. We got the milk and cookies at 91.5 average. All right, And then next. in second place, we have Pecan the, pie porter. Oh, okay. the pecan pie porter that at 91. Good. Number three, we got uh, winter white at 89. Which was a pleasant pie. break from the, the normal stout yeah. porter combos. Spruce IPA, which was at what? 89? Yes. 89. So then we got the organic chocolate stout at 86. And then in last place, still really good, and I think the most unique out of all of them mm -hmm. was... Sure the uh, Haywire Husky, and that was at 84 points. But I think overall this might be our highest collection of points out of the beers we've tried. Yeah, we've done summer beer, we've uh, done fall beer, with fall beer, and now winter. And yeah, I think collectively this definitely but, rates the highest out of all of them, yes. but make sure to check out those other two videos. Absolutely. Be sure to leave a comment down below with what your favorite winter beer is. Or if you think we're way off target with some of these, let us know. Yeah, if you've tried any of these and you disagree with us, let us know in the comment section down below. We got a Facebook mm -hmm. group. It's Cork and Java. Check it out. Check it out. Yeah, we have a lot of good conversations mm -hmm. about wine, uh, coffee, beer, liquor, a lot of good community chat on there. We got a Twitter account, which is at Cork Java. And a Pinterest page, which is pinterest.com slash cork and java. Until next time, guys, bottoms up. Yeah.